Margaret Thatcher was the most famous British Prime Minister of the post-war era. She was a strong friend of Israel, a strong friend of the Jews, and an enemy of anti-Semitism. But that did not mean that when the Israeli state committed war crimes, she felt unable to criticize, quite the reverse. Yet Rishi Sunak's claim to be the heir to Thatcher is utterly false. Had Maggie Thatcher arrived last week in Tel Aviv to meet Benjamin Netanyahu, she'd have come in swinging her famous handbag. That does not mean that she wouldn't have extended her deepest sympathy and support for the state of Israel and expressed her horror at the atrocities suffered by Israeli citizens. But she would also have given Benjamin Netanyahu a stern lecture in morality, international law, and human decency. Richie Sunak did none of those things. He arrived in Tel Aviv as Benjamin Netanyahu's poodle. At one point, Richie Sunak's sycophancy even extended to civility. At the press conference, he looked at the Israeli Prime Minister in the face and said to him the following words, I know that you are taking every precaution to avoid harming civilians. That was a straightforward lie and an insult to the thousands of Palestinians in their homes, in hospitals, in churches, who've died or been maimed or hospitalized in the bombing raids of the last week and more. Rishi Sunak made a grave mistake when he said that Britain was giving Israel her unequivocal support. That meant that Britain was giving Israel carte blanche to do whatever it wanted to the civilians of Gaza. Let's give one example of Britain's sycophancy towards Israel. There was a United Nations resolution for a ceasefire in the conflict, a so-called humanitarian pause. Did Britain back it? No. We abstained. The message from that vote, carry on bombing. I have studied Rishi Sunak's comments in the British media and comments in the British Parliament. There's not been one mention, let alone condemnation, of Israel's stated policy of collective punishment, which is a war crime, of course, under international law. Yoav Gallant, Israel's Defence Secretary, set out this policy in terms when he said that Israel would put Gaza under siege, no food, no electricity, no water. That is a war crime, and yet no mention, not even a mention by the British Prime Minister of this crime against humanity. What a dehumanizing message. They are being let loose on the Palestinian population who who their chief calls human animals. There is one more thing to be said about Rishi Sunak's trip to Tel Aviv this week. Mr. Sunak claimed, as British Prime Minister, to be speaking for the British people. He was not speaking for the British people. As the protests in London and across Britain have showed, he was speaking at best for a minority of the British establishment. But many British people I know from personal knowledge are disgusted by what Mr. Sunak said, ashamed by what Mr. Sunak has said. And that message, I hope, should be sent around the world.